Welcome back to the week where we are discussing the decision support system for the computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing. In this lecture, I will try to discuss the product data exchange, which is also known as PDX. Product data exchange, which is a method of uh, drawing the data exchange to use to translate between the different CAD programs and CAX program. CAX means it could be computer aided engineering, it could be computer aided manufacturing, it could be additive manufacturing, computer aided additive manufacturing or so whatever you call. So, product data exchange is an important topic to be learned because the basic incompatibilities among the various elements representations which are there in a CAD CAM system are through the exchanging of the modeling data. Even very raw or very trivial geometric entities such as circular arcs are represented by incompatible forms in many systems. So, some systems uh, such as I talked about nerves, I talked about B supplies, that data, how do we store the data? How is this data to be read by our final machine that is to uh, do the production over it because it runs a part programming and it develops a program or a code for running the program over it. Even if the program is not to be run for the computer aided engineering only, where FEM that is finite element method is to be taken or finite element analysis is to be taken, the design data is required in the required format. So, transfer of the data between dissimilar CAD CAM systems. dissimilar CAD CAM systems requires the need of a neutral system that is what we call as the product data exchange formats. So, there could be different kinds of data we have uh, uh, in general description of a product could be given in a vector data. By vector data I means the solid lines, dotted lines center line, the cutting plane lines which is engineering drawing, the vector data which represents the proper dimensions lines and we have annotation data. Annotation data is the dimension values or nodes or symbols, symbols for different surface finish requirements or the tolerance that we put here. So, we can put here the nodes, symbols, tolerances if those are put in the drawings or so. so. These are the data that we get from engineering drawing. In addition, the data that we get is from the CAD models in the form of the solid surface and wireframe that we discussed in the last lecture. So, this is associated with some annotation data as well. So, CAD CAM data exchange gives us the fundamental incompatibilities as I said among different entity presentation. Then complexity of the CAD CAM systems are, is there which is to be put into a neutral or a balanced system that could have a common language to understand. Then we have varying requirements of different users, different machines when these are manufactured, the users give their own data, their own kind of the setup sometimes and it is to be manufactured in such a way. For instance, uh, generally uh, for the post processing, when they say post processing, I will just put that in a block diagram. Um, there are uh, uh, computer aided manufacturing post processors which try to read the data that is developed in a CAD or which has been analyzed through a computer aided engineering platform. So, that post processor it could be a FANUC, it could be a German system, it could be a system from different parts of the world. So, FANUC is very general system, we put this name. FANUC is very co commonly used post processor or CAM software which reads a specific kinds of the data files. There are certain restriction on access to proprietary database, so that is why it is required 
so rapid pace of technological change calls the use of the product data exchange to be understand in a best manner now there are different kinds of translators that those are there in the data exchange so having talked about the need of what product data exchange is there are two major kind of the product data exchange methods i would call it as first is direct another is indirect direct means if i have a system 1 system 2 system 3 system 4 system 5 and let me say system n there are certain systems so they have a direct interaction between them for instance the solid works when you change a program when you save the program in solid works that is saved in a sld prt or prt uh, format solid cam is a software that is a post processor developed by the solid works itself that has a direct interaction so it could be direct interaction between the systems it any systems could interact with any other systems this is the direct interaction so in this direct solution we produce the direct translators of the data so it entails the translating the modeling data directly from one of the cad cam system format to another usually in a single step the solution converts the data or the database format from one native format to another native format and it requires knowledge of both the native formats in a way these are generally written by the computer service companies that specialize in cad cam database conversion there are different companies i'll talk about the top companies who provide the direct interaction between them between the data softwares so in the indirect translation what is there we have systems here as well system n we have a neutral file in the center now the neutral file is able to connect to different systems it can interact with any of the systems so any of the system whether it is a cad or cam system can have an interaction with other system using this neutral file so in the indirect translations this neutral database structure is independent of any or existing or the future cad cam systems this structure acts as an intermediary or a focal point of communication among the dissimilar database structures these are all dissimilar database structures of different cad cam systems the solution converts the native formats to a neutral format and uh, the systems can interpret and understand this neutral format these neutral formats are the only that we need to discuss in this lecture so what are the majorly neutral formats direct interaction between the different systems when the uh, system is designed if you suppose you need to design a new cnc machine either you will purchase an existing post processor in a fanuc or in an head in hand the different systems are there or you will uh, try to generate your own post processor then you will have to define which languages or which formats would this support it is just like um, your pdf file is saved from different formats ppt could be saved in P P pdf your jpeg could be saved as pdf word file could be saved as pdf pdf becomes just a print data format that is used for printing in general so in the similar way we have a neutral file that can interact with the different post processes yes there are different details in different kind of formats as dxf i discussed about in the last lecture it is a two dimensional format only iges and step are three dimensional formats so neutral file is important so generally each of these translators has different uh, merits and demerits so direct translators provide a satisfactory solution when a small number of systems are involved
But as this number increases, the number of translated programs which are required between any systems increases. You can see because here n system, each system is interact with the other, other system. So, it is uh, suppose if we have uh, maybe two systems to be talked, it is n p 2 programs are to be developed. So, each time when we add one value, when n turns to n plus 1, so this doubles the number of program doubles, it is multiplied by 2 in a way. So, when n goes to n plus 1, so then the number of translators if I put it as capital N, that is a translators, they increase by twice of the n, because these many number of the programs are required or different translators are required. So, for a small system where we have a, a small pair that is to be compared, it is okay. But for a larger system, we generally prefer the neutral file. In the neutral file, the total number of systems or the translators that you require is equal to 2n for n number of systems. This is n number of systems. These are the translators. Please make a note, in the case of the direct system, this 2n is additional. This is additional if the n is increased just by one number. And in case of indirect system, the total number required is 2n only. So, very small number of systems, those, those are there. If you have fixed that, okay, I am running to a mass production where my machines would be running this specific kind of the program and only this format I will be receiving. Yes, we can work with a direct system. We can have a program. We can maybe purchase a SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDCAM, both of the softwares and that can be keep on working. If we know that our system has to have some batch kind of work or maybe a kind of a job kind of production, if the flow is not a complete product flow, if it is a process flow uh, uh, or in your layout, then the indirect system is taken where neutral file is taken because neutral file will keep on changing or keep on accepting the format whatever is taken from the different cat files that you receive for the different uh, batches that you are trying to produce or manufacture. So, when I talk about the neutral file, where does this neutral file fall in the overall databases connections? So, when I say, I will just name it as the different processes which are there. What we have is, we have a native database and another native database. which means these are two different systems, maybe system 1 and system 2. We have a neutral file here that tries to take the data from one database to another to connect to the neutral file itself because neutral file has to understand what native database is there. It, the file has to be pre-processed before interacting to the neutral file. We have pre-processors here. And once the preprocessor transfers the file to the neutral element here, it goes to the second database where the second native database is also to interact or to communicate with my neutral file. Now, here what we call is something known as post processor. Consider maybe this is a CAD program or this is a computer aided X program which could be computer aided engineering or computer aided manufacturing anything. Now, this neutral file could be any of the formats that I will just discuss it could be IGES, it could be STEP, it could be DXF, it could be PRT any of these files could be there. Now, here are the preprocessors, what are these? Preprocessors are utilized to fix geometry, to continue with discretization process, apply loads and restrictions. Preprocessors, this is to fix geometry, discretization.
For instance, if my file, my CAD is only a uh, solid model that I have developed and my post processor is a computer aided engineering where I need to conduct my finite element method. In this, my whole system is to be divided into a mesh. Mesh means it could be a triangular, it could be a trapezoidal mesh that would face the different kinds of analysis over it. It could be thermal analysis, it could be the stress analysis. So depending upon that, how do we discretize what is the size of the mesh? This preprocessor tries to work on that as well. Then it also apply loads, apply restrictions. Then maybe some properties are to be specified. Specific properties of the models, constituent materials. So, in the end, the file is ready to be transferred to the neutral point, or that is the neutral base. So, because pre processing takes up the majority of the labor time for simulation study in a way, so automation tools and the ability to customize processes are extremely significant for lowering the overall analyst effort. So, due to the differences in modeling between computer aided engineering software as well as differences in the handling of data between different CAD systems and maybe the simulation systems as well, managing the data to be imported from different CAD systems is a significant element in the pre-processing step. The accuracy of the analysis is determined by the mesh quality. Here I would say accuracy, I would say equal to or equivalent to the mesh quality. Mesh quality as I mentioned, it is the discretization. Also the amount of time that is needed for modeling process is determined by the levels of automation as well as the case specific modeling tools which are used here. On the other hand, we have the post processor. Post processors are responsible for importing the result files. So, these files post processor analyze using different solvers, providing different environments and tools which are necessary to generate complete reports via maybe uh, model visualizations are also taken somewhere. In case of uh, the CNC post processor, it is a piece of the software that generates tool paths. So, once the tool paths have been created in any of the CAD system, it generates the tool paths. The software also converts the tool paths into NC programs. Convert tool parts to NC. NC is numerical control program which are read by the controller of the machine. So, here at the native, we have the controller of the machine. The majority of the computer aided manufacturing systems are designed to be machine independent. Machine independent means these are standalone systems which can uh, interact with different kinds of the CAD softwares. It can interact with different kinds of the CAD systems and on the other hand, the CAM systems as well. So, these are independent sitting at the center. These four processors are just kind of the also independent systems. Also, sometimes with the machine itself, some specific post processor is attached that uh, is not independent of the machine, but mostly these are machine independent. Now, being machine independent enable them to be programmed according to the components independently for the specific machine that will be used to manufacture those components. The tool path data that is generated by CAD system is saved in files that are independent of machines. So, these are the files which are known as the neutral files. So, these files I will put here. These are machine independent. Then these are CAD software independent. Now, while designing the processors, it is important that uh, 
we follow the specific set of rules designing the processors. Number one, we analyze and tabulate the entity characteristics. When I say entity, this means the kind of the entity set that you are using that could be IGES or STEP file. The standard may contain an entity that has no equivalence with any of the CAD systems even. So, this step involves the study of the entity mathematical representation. That is what are the equations that these follow is it a curve that could be mathematically be represented or not. So, are we using a standard curves or are we using any CAT scan system that is supporting a kind of the curves or the mathematical representation which are those. So, in many cases an entity can be represented by a number of nearly but some methods could be there if not mathematical it could be some empirical methods as well. Second step here is we define or clear ourselves with what is the conversion algorithm. Select a conversion algorithm. So, this uh, clearly provides the information required to design the proper conversion algorithm. What is the algorithm that we are trying to do? Are we going to conduct a analysis over it only? or are we going to manufacture finally using a CNC or additive manufacturing setup. So, then we set a complete specifications of the processor. When I say complete specifications that means what is has been done in the step 1 and 2, the core is built, the data is tabulated and analyzed, we selected an algorithm, then the complete specification is you know the detailing of the things which are done in step 1 and 2. So, this include the standard revision of the processor that ought to support in the subset of the standard entities it can support and the user interface of the processor that is to be developed, then we go for the design verification. Design verification procedure that means we carefully verify whether the processor is uh, actually able to operate or interface between different organizations or different vendors. The processor should be verified by uh, developing a test data running it through different processes and comparing the actual results. This is how different processors could be designed, there are certain steps to those. Yes, there are certain problems in those as well. Problems could be, it could be because of the entity set that is there. Entity set might not be a very general uh, IGES or STEP. It might not have no equivalence with any of the specific CAD CAM systems or the system may contain an entity with no standard that is there. Suppose no standard is there. this could be one challenge. In this case, the processor could either ignore translating this entity or translate this entity into a similar one while destroying the original meaning in a way. Now, another challenge could be because of the format. When I say format, uh, while standard uh, allows exchanging complex structure and relationships, its format must be processable by a wide range of different computer systems. So, therefore, we can only use simple data formats and management methods which are known to these systems. Then it could be individual CAD CAM systems. When I say individual CAD CAM systems, that means these limits are now relating to the model size, the model space, the data precision that is required, 
different systems have different requirements if we are trying to design this system so this decision support system has to be designed accordingly uh, as per the requirement that you are making now many people are developing the small CAC machines by themselves they are developing their own post processes they are all small companies in India they are companies in Bangalore in Hyderabad uh, in Ludhiana those who are developing the small 3d printers as well when small 3d printers are developed they try to see how would the file interact so all these challenges when these are taken the standard files are taken but companies which go big which wish to keep their system within themselves only they go for individual CAD CAM that does not interact with very common softwares so this is uh, the post processing how does it work the top used post processors in the computer aided manufacturing if I try to talk about them one is the power mill I will just name them post processors most popular power mill is a post processor or post processor editor which is a high speed and it is used for generally 5 axis machining it, it is provided by Autodesk only then one of the leading providers of the software is Autodesk post processors in power mill are available for a range of CNC machines and even some robots also use them then we have solid cam solid cams is compatible to SolidWorks and inventor it is developed by the Dissolve Systems, the company that developed the SolidWorks only. So, like many CAM packages, the Solid CAM also not very easy to edit. So, it is written in a file format that is a GPP file format, which mostly consists of the different statements where we need not to have any text editor. So, other than Solid CAM, we have CAMWorks. Camworks is a post processor editor which is a feature based cam software and it is designed for adaptable automation. So, it is also provided by SolidWorks only. Camworks is one of the packages or one of the very few packages that offers the post processor editor for high flexibility. That is the graphical info interface allows you to quickly customize the post processes and generate error free code out of it. Other than the power mill, Autodesk has its free version of the CAD software that is known as Fusion 360 for Fusion 360 Autodesk has developed Autodesk post processor editor so this is majorly used for Fusion 360 Fusion 360 is a cloud based software with the people not having much knowledge about uh, the CAD in a way that amateurs who are there they can also use this and uh, we also the computer that you have you can just with a 8 GB RAM itself you can only start using this without even a graphics card this could work to some extent. So, so Fusion 360 provides you good information about how the CAD software work many drawings could be developed here but for the detailed analysis sometimes for the very big assembly suppose for instance if you need to develop a complete car model different components assembly or so you would need definitely a more sophisticated software such as inventor such as SolidWorks or so. Fusion 360 can be useful for the small systems in general for developing the overall shape the outer body these are the major software there are many other that could be put in the list because there are now tens of the software which are available in the market and we can talk about many of them but these are the four major that I have mentioned here for the CAM. I will talk about the post processors or the post processor readers for the additive manufacturing as well in the next uh, week. In the next lecture, I will talk about the different entity sets or the format that is IGES, DXF, STEP and we will try to finish this week there. Thank you.